This happened when a man took 200 cups of coffee in one go. Five mistakes that led to his death and how you will be safe while taking supplements. Let's go! On January the 5th, 2021, a personal trainer and father of two, Tom Masfield, from a town in north coast of Wales, here in the UK, was preparing a pre-workout drink with a new packet of caffeine that he bought from Blackburn, a British retail and pre-workout sports supplements company. He puts his uh, kitchen scales on the worktop and he tries to measure the amount. He reckons that 5 grams of caffeine would be enough for the drink. He drinks it with some difficulty because it tastes too strong. His wife was also in the house. About 10 minutes after, he starts feeling bad. His heart is racing, he starts having palpitations, he panics. Foam starts appearing from his mouth, he's going into cardiac arrest. The wife starts yelling for an ambulance. Paramedics arrive 10 minutes after and start using the defibrillator as they try to subdue his grossly abnormal heartbeat. On the way to the hospital, he sadly dies in the ambulance. It was already too late for Tom. The coroner decided that it was death due to caffeine toxicity. They say it was a misadventure. The level in his blood were found to be a whopping 392 milligrams of caffeine per liter, whereas normally after a cup of coffee you should be having anything between 2 and 4 milligrams of caffeine. Tom drank the equivalent of 200 cups of coffee in one go. But why? What happened? What things went wrong for Tom to lose his life? How exactly did he do this fateful mistake? Let's analyze the five reasons why Tom lost his life and how you can be safer when taking supplements. Mistake number one. He finished his drink even if it tasted awfully bitter. Now, in food science, caffeine serves as a benchmark for bitterness. It is the main ingredient which is responsible for the bitterness of coffee. With so much caffeine in it, the coffee should have tasted really awful. But he kept on going for a reason, and that's unfortunate. Mistake number two. The powder didn't come with a measuring spoon. I don't know if the powder came with instructions and with appropriate warnings in the packet, but I assume it would have, because it's a legal obligation. But definitely, it did not have a measuring spoon inside. A plastic spoon would indicate the suitable single dose. And trust me, the spoon would have been tiny in this case. How tiny? What's next to find out? Mistake number three. The digital scales were not the appropriate ones. It was a normal digital balance for cooking with a minimum of 2 grams and a maximum of uh, 500 grams. Kitchen scales. Like the ones I also have around my house. Nothing like the ones that we use in the laboratory here at Queen's. These ones can go way lower and have many, many decimal points for accuracy. The kitchen scales are not suitable, not even sensitive enough for small quantities, and they will refuse to show numbers. To that, let's add that maybe some people have the British imperial system in mind, the ounces, the pounds, the stones. And when they try to convert to grams on the fly, it's gonna be messy. I'm telling you, even NASA made mistakes because of that. Mistake number four, the white powders and the power of the habits. Ah, the white powders. It can be flour, sugar, salt, baking soda, to name a few. It can be heroin, it can be caffeine. It can be dangerous or it can be safe. If you are a gym goer, you are familiar with the white powders. Whey protein comes in white, if it's unflavored. And more importantly, creatine, a compound that helps the muscle growth and performance, comes also in white. And I say this because we tend to consume both in relatively big quantities. It's 5 grams for creatine and it is about 25, if not more, for protein powder. And we measure them usually with a measuring spoon included or with a kitchen scale. Speaking of white powders, we need to remember that between them, volume and density are not the same. Some powders are fluffy and light, like for example creatine, and some powders like uh, sugar or some salt are really heavy and really dense. 
Reportedly, the man was consuming pure caffeine for the first time. But the power of the habit is really, really strong. If you have a few things in your mind, you could mechanically think that consuming 5 grams of caffeine is okay, but it isn't. Mistake number 5. Dealing with high purity compounds. A strong cup of coffee, americano, cappuccino, flat white, contain two shots of espresso, 70-75 grams of caffeine each, that's about 150 grams of caffeine. A teaspoon of pure caffeine powder contains 3200 milligrams or the equivalent of 22 coffee drinks at about 15 grams each. The recommended daily intake for caffeine for an adult is about 400 milligrams only. That is between 3 to 4 cups of coffee or drinks, depending on how you say it. So poor Tom, he added about 2 teaspoons in his drink just as his kitchen scales were showing 5 grams. When we consume coffee, caffeine is circulating in our system and it is metabolized. A modern coffee, 150 milligrams, will end up giving you 4 to 8 milligrams of caffeine after some time, for example 8 hours. With a half-life, which is the time needed for the concentration in the blood to be halved, being about 5 hours on average. In Tom's case, during the coronal's toxical examination, the caffeine in his blood was found to be around 400 milligrams. It depends when they took the sample from him and what you exactly define as a cup, but the real number doesn't matter. It is about 50 to 150, maybe even 200 cups of coffee in one go. And that was too much for his heart, too much for his liver, too much for his system to metabolize and to get over with. The Food and Drugs Administration in the US in 2013 first surfaced the fact that caffeine, pure caffeine, should maybe be banned or should not maybe be labeled as a dietary supplement, so that it will be labeled as a pharmaceutical, so that it will have another route with regards to labeling and with regards to administration and presence in the market. So now for you, how do you stay safe with dietary supplements? First of all, do your research before you buy. Do you really need these supplements? And in this pure form, check the label and read the instructions on the label. They are there for a reason. Please read them. Do not trust your intuition because this might lead you to habits and habits can lead you to death. If something seems like whatever you have seen before and it's white, it doesn't mean it will have the same properties and it could be the dose that is going to be lethal. So take care whenever you are taking something that you have never taken before and even if it looks white, sometimes it's not that harmless. But can you really die from a caffeine overdose? Well, I mean, you can. It happened. Can it happen to you? No, if you are careful. No, if you are aware of what you are getting, what you are taking in your body. Paracelsius, he was saying that the dose makes the poison. Dosi sola facit venenum. That's my Latin, okay? I'm... I'm, I'm with science, not with philosophy. Even the air we breathe can become toxic if we overdo it. If trying to breathe too fast. A lot. Eh? I will get dizzy. Oh, I mean, uh, don't do it, don't do it. I will get in trouble. YouTube will get in trouble as well. But the doses makes the poison. Remember that. Mistakes can happen to everybody. Was Tom's a misadventure? I mean, the misadventure to me and to my weird mind, it sounds a bit uh, like an irony. Probably it isn't in the English language, but let's not take things lightly. Poor Tom, it was a miscalculation. It was several parameters that really um, didn't uh, go well for him, of course, and his family. And that's really unfortunate. But be mindful and learn something from this video today, from this mistake. Maybe it will be helpful for you in the future. Thanks a lot and if you like this video why don't you see this one over here where I explain in detail the health properties of coffee, caffeine and how it all works. See you! Bye!